Hello there friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tank. My name is Alan. So it looks like Director Orson Krennic's plan to use a controlled opposition to rile up tensions on Gorman has worked. The Gorman massacre has led to hundreds if not thousands of deaths according to Imperial reprisal records. The death of dozens of Imperial troopers will no doubt be highlighted by the Imperial media and used as a justification to call for a military occupation and crackdown on the planet. You know, years from now, scholars of galactic history will view the Gorman massacre as a turning point in this conflict between the Rebellion and the Galactic Empire. Key leaders in the Rebellion will have taken notice. The Empire's deliberate attempt to trap the Gore in the center of the city of Palmo and massacre them shows that peaceful resistance and political reform are no longer options that can be used to fight the Empire. This marks the official start to the Galactic Civil War. But what happens to the Gore? How catastrophic is this operation going to be? Well, first, let's take a look at the material that the Empire is trying to extract from the surface of this planet. Deep substrate foliated calcite. So let's put on our geology hat for a quick second and try to understand what this mineral is. So a substrate in geology is an area of rock or sediment where physical chemical and biological processes have occurred and created a new material. Deep indicates that this material is probably in the lower levels of the crust of a planet several miles below the surface. And foliation simply refers to the structure of the mineral and means multiple thin layers of material being compressed together. So all of these terms kind of give us more of a clue of what calcite is and probably how they're going to extract it. From what we can tell, calcite is most likely a rare mineral found in small quantities in metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks are usually formed deep below the surface in areas of extremely high pressure and high temperature where a lot of elements are found in liquid form and not in solid form. This allows for all types of natural mixing. And then slowly through geological movement like uh, plate tectonics or uh, you know volcanic activity, that material, these metamorphic rocks, move from below the surface closer and closer to the upper layers of the crust. A real equivalent for calcite might be something like kyanite. This material can be found in pretty crystal formations and can be polished for jewelry or used in spiritual rituals, not all that different from what some force healers use kyber crystal for. But kyanite can also be used in the creation of very heat-resistant materials which can be used to line kilns and foundry molds in industrial settings. And this is kind of similar to this calcite material that Orson Krennic so desperately needs. Uh, he claims the main reason why the Empire needs this is to coat the reactor for the Empire's very special energy program. In our last video, we talked about the compartmentalization of information for Imperial projects. The primary goal is to allow Palpatine to have much more control over everything, including how the narrative over the project plays out. By decreasing the amount of people who actually have information on what's going on, you can decrease the potential dissent over a project, and you can also limit the accountability for each individual at each step of the process. With the Gorman Massacre, for instance, you have people like Sergeant Boyd and his men at the bottom. They have no idea what's going on, and they're just sent into the fray without any explanation by their Captain Cato. Captain Cato knows a little more than Boyd. He knows that his men are supposed to instigate a riot in the middle of the square on Palmo. And then you have operators like Cyril Karn who think that the goal of the operation is to find outside agents when in reality he's just being used to infiltrate the Gorman Front and radicalize them. Dentramira, who is the ISB supervisor in charge of all of this, understands this. But actually, she doesn't know everything either. She doesn't know what Orson Krennic knows. All of this death and destruction on Gorman is not for Project Celestial Power. Well, it actually is. It's just that Project Celestial Power is a complete lie. It's not what people say it is. Even its lead researchers like Galen Urso don't really understand what this program is about. I mean, here is the official Imperial narrative. The Energy Initiative remains the centerpiece of his agenda. Access to stable, unlimited power will transform the galactic economy and solidify Imperial authority. So yeah, this makes a lot of sense. I would get on board with this, like unlimited cheap energy, uh, raise massive amounts of the population out of poverty. This is a really good thing. This is the kind of initiative that people who support a more powerful executive branch might want. They want direct results made by a very capable leadership that cuts right through the bureaucracy, which is what Project Celestial Power seems like. But no, in reality, it's, it's all a lie. This is one of the worst government programs in galactic history because this is the program to essentially build the Death Star, a moon-sized superweapon that is just extremely wasteful and has 
no real purpose. And this calcite they want, apparently they've searched all across the galaxy for other sources, for alternatives, and unfortunately for the Gormans, they couldn't find anything. Synthetic calcites, calcite alternatives, calcite substitutes. I mean, the amount of time spent pondering this grubby little bit of rock is sadly astonishing. So it sounds like the Empire has no choice but to mine Gorman, and the, the results will be catastrophic, according to the Empire's own, I'm sure, very conservative estimates. The extent of our withdrawal may render the planet unstable. It's gouge mining. There would be stress on the planet's core. Okay, so a few things to unpack here. Gouge mining doesn't exist on Earth, and that is because it is just... We don't have the technology to do it. We don't have the political will to do it. And even if we did, I don't think anyone would want to do this because it would utterly destroy our planet. Gouge mining basically refers to mining that goes deep into the planet's crust and removes substantial amounts of material from the overall mass of the planet. This can lead to permanent changes to the crust and potentially even the mantle, which of course can lead to all sorts of geological shifts and movements in the plates, which will create all sorts of hardship for people on the surface of the planet. This is really just in the realm of science fiction at this point. Like, think about the destruction of Vulcan by Nero. Uh, it's that level of destruction. And he uses a massive mining ship to drill into the core of a planet. Now, when you have a galaxy-wide civilization like the Empire, you can actually do stuff like this because you can scale up technology, scale up mining operations to the level where you're literally taking an entire planet full of resources. Here on Earth, we have mining in certain regions and stars. We can technically mine entire asteroids or moon. This crazy scaling also allows mining corporations to grow to extremely large sizes in order to you know, carry out these operations. Most of the largest vehicles on Earth are already operated by the mining industry. And so if you have a galaxy-wide economy with ships the size of moons or cities being built, you also need city-sized mining vehicles. In a previous video, we took a look at several different types of mining vessels in Star Wars, ranging from the sand crawlers that were repurposed by the Jawas to something a little larger and more crazier like Lando Calrissian's Nomad City. The Empire also has large mining rigs. In Jedi Fallen Order, we have the MK270 Imperial Pulverizer that was used to drill through ice and rock on Zepho. This seems more like a, you know, boring or drilling type of machine. That's not exactly what you're going to need for planet gouging. What the planet might use on Gorman looks probably more like one of these ore crawlers, dubbed the World Devastators. That's actually a legend's term. This is a super weapon that the Empire used to literally devour planets with tractor beams. I think those things were just a little bit too powerful. They're almost like little mini star forges that just absorb planets and crank out TIE fighters. Too OP. Now, the cannon version looks very similar to the World Devastator, uh, but it is a much more simple machine. What it does is it slowly crawls across the surface of a planet and rips up everything on the surface and then, like, heats it up in a furnace. Still very terrifying stuff. Uh, completely terraforms the surface of Lothal within just, like, months. Now, on Earth, strip and open pit mining is quite limited because first... You're destroying entire landscapes when you do this. You know, forests, swamps, tundras, entire ecosystems, and all the flora and fauna are gone. The media area can also experience erosion, a decrease in soil fertility, and also there's always the concerns from pollution from any kind of runoff that comes from the mine. But that's really negligible compared to the amount of damage that the Empire is probably going to do here. So the first problem is when you mine a mineral like calcite, you have to separate it from those metamorphic rocks we were talking about before. Crystal materials form under crazy pressure and heat, but there's also dirt, rock, and sediment and other stuff that is being fused alongside it. And so what we actually don't know is the yield of calcite. Like, when you take the metaphoric, metamorphic rock that calcite uh, is usually found in, what percentage of the rock is this mineral? Is it 1%? Is it 50%? I'm going to guess it's much smaller, much lower uh, trace amounts. This is why this material is so rare, and this is also why the Imperial engineers are like, this might destabilize the core, because they're going to have to take a lot of material to get enough calcite for the reactor dish. You know, just to be clear, guys, on Earth, we do not have the technology to get even close to destabilizing the core of mining. Like, the deepest open pit mines we have on Earth are less than a mile deep. And the deepest hole that's ever been drilled, the Kola Super Deep Bore Hole, which is just 12.2 kilometers. So if the Earth is like a giant basketball, we haven't even scraped like the outer layers of paint. Plants are really big. Also, another problem is like the deeper you go, the more pressure, gravity, and heat there is. 
things start to act kind of weird. Everything turns more liquidy, and you know, you're just basically digging buckets of molten material at that point. It's utterly crazy. I guess technologically speaking, what the Empire could do is just strip mine things layer by layer and do it in a very even way so you avoid some of the problems you would have by just drilling deep into the surface of the planet and making it small and very deep hole. But at one point, if you move enough material from the planet, let's say 5%, 10%, I actually don't know. This is more of a physics problem. It's going to make the planet imbalance because, again, you're changing the center of mass. You know, the Earth is nowhere near as solid as we think it is. Maybe the crust looks kind of solid, but everything is kind of floating on top of molten material. And so we could see mega earthquakes, volcanoes popping up all over the place, massive tsunamis as a result of all of that movement. Now, maybe if you're able to evenly strip mine the surface of the planet so that you don't have a major imbalance, you can escape some of the more catastrophic consequences. But still, you're talking about moving so much material that it's going to create huge environmental consequences. You might have enough dust in the atmosphere to just completely black out everything. It's basically what the Empire did to Alum. Alum used to be a holy planet for the Jedi. There are actually massive kyber crystal deposits on Alum, and the Jedi built a temple to guard the precious minerals. Over the years, the Jedi would establish a ceremony known as the Gathering. Every Jedi youngling throughout the Order's history would journey to Illum, enter the temple, and commune with their first kyber crystal there. When the Empire took over, they seized control of Illum. This actually really pleased Galen Erso, the lead scientist behind the uh, Death Star main reactor, and that's because when the Republic were in charge, the Jedi had a complete monopoly over who got to use the kyber crystals. And the Jedi definitely didn't want scientists like Galen Erso to break apart the kyber and figure out how they worked. Jedi purists found this act to be blasphemous. Yeah, in some weird ways, the Sith were far more rational and pragmatic when it came to certain things, like understanding how the Force worked. Darth Plagueis would literally carry out experiments using the scientific method to try and understand what midichlorians were. Whereas the Jedi are more likely to go with the flow and use their connection with the Force and intuition to understand how things work. Anyway, the Empire would begin to mine loom. The process looks quite similar to strip mining, and we see the progress of this actually in Jedi Fallen Order when Cal Kestis visits the planet in 5 BBY, more than a decade after the Empire's rise. You can already see a large equatorial trench. It took the Empire years to gut a loom like this, and it's actually a moon, not a planet, like Gorman. Eventually, a loom would be repurposed by the First Order as Star Killer Base. At that point, a massive laser and reactor was built into the moon itself. Now, here's what's interesting about this. Uh, the Illum project took decades to actually complete. Illum's location was also hidden by the Jedi, and so it was pretty easy for the Empire to carry out this operation in complete secrecy. Gorman, on the other hand, is a well-known world. I don't understand exactly how the Empire is going to manage just strip mining the planet with world devastators. Even after they orchestrated the Gorman Massacre, I still don't think there's a justification to just remove all of these people off of the planet. And yeah, people will be watching, and if they see the Empire remove all these people and then you see all of these like mining rigs come down i mean i don't think even palpatine is going to be able to spin that he's going to look like a complete asshole and yes he's still beholden to the people's opinion to a certain degree i mean with alderaan you could still pretend like a mining accident happened because there's no evidence left everything was just blown into little pieces what they're proposing to do on gorman should technically take decades to complete and most of the world is going to be able to see this happen from orbit i mean it's not going to be easy for the Empire to hide stuff like this. What makes things even weirder is that we know that the Death Star will be complete in just a few months, so I wonder how this is going to play off. Maybe the big twist is at the end the Empire finds an alternative to Kalkite and they don't even need Gorman, making this whole situation even more evil and completely pointless. So there you have it, guys. That is our video for today. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about my theory. How do you think this is all going to play out? Also, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that my allegiance is to the Republic, to democracy. I'll see you next time.